Hello and welcome to Accounting 410. Now I'm making this video for both Accounting 410 CCO2 and Accounting 410 CCO4. Um, I'm just making the one um, just to, to kind of stay consistent between what I tell both of you groups. But I do want to um, note that there are two different groups here. But I'm just going to work with CCO2. Okay, um, except for the codes and the class time, everything else is the same. So for accounting 410 CCO2, I first want to go through the Blackboard site. So first of all, if you're on your course, and of course you'll either be in CCO2 or CCO4, the first thing that comes up is a workaround for viewing problems. Blackboard's been having problems with viewing PDFs. So if you only see the first page of a PDF, you have to fix it. It's just a little video and you change one setting. Now under course materials, you'll have a course outline for CCO2 or CCO4, and then how to work through accounting 410. I'm going to go through both of these today so that you've got an understanding of it, how it all works. Connect information and links. You're going to be using Connect, that's the online um, program with the text. And here's PowerPoint instructions, a handout with instructions for registering, and a video in case you're having troubles figuring, figuring it out. And I'll talk a little bit about your textbook options a little bit later in the video. Office hours are going to start the week of September 14th, so starting next week, just so you've had a chance to look over the materials and videos and things like that. But email me in the meantime if you have questions. These are the times. Tuesday, 11 till noon, Wednesday, 1230 to 130, 330 to 430, Friday, 10 to 11, or by appointment. And they're going to be held on Zoom or WebEx. I haven't figured out exactly which platform I want to use yet. In this folder will be links for the sessions. So one link for Tuesdays, one link for Wednesdays, and so on. You can just click it, access it, and it'll take you there. The other thing I've included is a student discussion board because you guys don't have each other in a classroom where you can chat and say, you know, I'm having a problem on this assignment. What are you doing? Can you help me with it? That kind of thing. I thought I'd put in a student discussion board. So if you look in there, I've got a little welcome message that you can see, but all you do is you create a thread and ask your question. I don't mind you guys asking specific questions about assignments or the coursework or anything like that. Um, people will reply to the thread and so on. Um, I'm not going to moderate it and I'm not going to answer questions on it. So this is just for you guys to talk. I will look at it occasionally and if there's any. Um, inappropriate behavior, um, then there will be uh, negative repercussions. So I just want to point that out. And that would be kind of, you know, swearing at someone or abusing someone or just being rude, that kind of stuff. Um, we just won't tolerate it. Um, pretend you're at work and it's professional. So that's the student discussion board. Then what we have is each of the chapters and then information for the exams. And I'll talk about that uh, in a second. But for example, if we go into chapter 12, we kind of do things backwards. We're starting with 12, then 10 and 11, then 2 to 9. In chapter 12, you'll see a link to notes. So what I do is I make kind of workbook type notes with theory, and then you read that. Then I will do videos on the examples and the problems. 
and then there's suggested problems at the end. The suggested problem solutions are right here, so you can work on them on paper, but I also have them on Connect, so you can work on them there if you need to. Since your exams are going to be on Connect, it's probably a good idea to practice there. Links to the lecture videos will be in here. They will be on YouTube, and there will just be a direct link to them. So all the chapters have the same format. If there's any extra questions or any extra stuff from a chapter, I'll put it in there as well. The exams, there's nothing in there right now, but it will have a breakdown of the topics and a rough estimation of what percentage is on what chapters and so on for each of the exams. So that's Blackboard. Now what I want to do is go to the course outline. And that's not the one I wanted. I wanted this one. Okay, so here's the course outline. Um, you can read through all this. As I mentioned, I'm Stephanie Iback. Um, maybe I didn't. Now I can't remember if I did. I've tried this recording about five times for WebEx to work properly, so I'm really at a loss to say what I've said or not. Now, I do want to point out something here. Your class schedule is Wednesday, Friday, 3.30 to 5. That's section CCO2. Section CCO4 is Tuesday, Thursday from 11 till 12.30. Okay, so um, the only time that is important is during exams. Midterm and final exams, sorry, will be scheduled during the actual class time. Actually, midterms will, finals are on a whole nother schedule. So when you're going to write a midterm, make sure you've got time during your actual class time. So again, CCO2 is 3.30 to 5. The other group, CCO4, is 11 to 12.30 on Tuesday, Thursday. Um, in case I didn't tell you about me, my name's Stephanie Iback. I'm a CPA, CGA, and I've been a controller of a school district. I've done a lot of uh, consulting um, with small and medium-sized businesses and some not-for-profit organizations, and I've been teaching for quite a while. I've also done some work with the CPA, both on um, some of their prep material development and on their PEP program as a session leader. Okay, so my office, in case we ever get out of COVID, is here. Phone number is right here. It'll go to my email so I can tell um, that someone's called and left a message. My email, best way to meet, reach me, and in Blackboard Learn, you can email through there and it'll go to my main email address. Now, office hours for everybody, all four of my classes are the same thing. Oh, before I forget, when you email me, please tell me what class you're in. Because I've got 410 and 315 this semester, so I just need to know which one you're in. Um, and the section number would be great, especially if you're asking me about Connect, because then I know which section you are to find you. Okay, office hours. Tuesday, 11 till noon, Wednesday, 12.30 to 1.30, and 3.30 to 4.30, and Friday, 10 to 11, or by appointment on Zoom or WebEx. And I'll just give you the links. Uh, the required text is Modern Advanced Accounting in Canada, 9th edition. Now, while we're talking about the text, let me just get this other thing up so I can talk about it now. And where did it go? Under Connect, there's a little PowerPoint slideshow on Blackboard. One of the pages, slide six, tells you your purchase options for your texts. So you can have 
Connect Online Access that you'll buy, and it includes the book, and you can buy it at the bookstore, um, and it's got a little link there, and it's $89. If you prefer, oh, with this, you can also purchase a loose leaf print text within your paid Connect account for $30 plus shipping and handling. So it comes out to about $120 plus shipping and handling. Or if you want an actual text, you can buy a print text and connect for $149.95. So that's up to you. Um, a lot of students find this, the 89 works really well. And then if they find through during the class, they do want a print text, they can just order that. Okay, so let's stop sharing that. Oh, that stops sharing everything. Still learning. So let me just go back and I want to go to course outline. If I can. Okay, here we were. So that's the text. It is a new edition as of last year. Okay, you can read all this, connect, Blackboard, description. Here's the thing you probably want to know the most. The evaluation. You've got connect assignments for 20%, midterm for 20, two of them, and a final for 40. Now, your dates for the exams are here and the chapters. Notice you guys that are in the other section, CC04, your dates are a day earlier because you go Tuesday, Thursday, not Wednesday, Friday. So just double check your dates when you're going through your course outline if you're in CC04. So that's the breakdown of the evaluation and all this stuff that's in all your um, course outlines. You can just read that. Now, the connect assignments, here's the link for CCO2. Of course, the course outline for CCO4 has a different link. And three attempts for each assignment, you get the highest. Connect is weird, it only shows you your average. I'm just gonna take the highest, I don't follow their little things. Um, you get the solutions after the third attempt or when you get 100%. And no makeup assignments, you miss it, you get zero. Here's the breakdown, and the due dates are Sunday for everybody, no matter what section you're in. Now, you can complete the assignments early if you wish. They're separate assignments, so it's not one big assignment. There's one for chapter 10, one for chapter 11. So as soon as you finish chapter 10, you could certainly go um, onto it. Now, the schedule at that last page basically breaks down each week and what you should cover to try and keep you on track through these 15 weeks before finals. It tells you when your midterms are. Now, notice here it's got the date and the time because you have to write it during that time. So please make sure you have access to a laptop, your kids have babysitters, you've got, uh, no you've got time away from work during your exam time. Now remember you guys, if you're in CC04, this will be a different date, this will be October 6th, and your time will be 11 till 12.30. So make sure you take a look at that, look at your own course outline, and get the times and dates right and booked in. Now we get a whole reading week, which is good, give you a good chance to catch up. Now the final, the tentative final exam date for CCO2 is Friday, December 18th from one to three. Your final exam will only be two hours long. CCO4, you're looking at Saturday, December 12th from one till three also. So Saturday, December 12th for uh, CCL4. Okay, so that is 
the course outline. Hopefully that made sense to you. Remember CCO4, please look at yours specifically and um, let me know if you have any questions. So I'm just going to take a drink of water here. The last thing I want to do with you is go through um, working through accounting online. Let me just make sure I've got this. Okay, so this is the same this is the same um, document for both CCO2 and CCO4. So since the whole thing is online, I thought I'd do a little um, explanation of what you should do and kind of what you should follow through with to do this. Um, to be successful in this course. So right off the bat, you guys, this is a very difficult course, especially the consolidation process, because it takes chapters three to nine to get through. We keep adding pieces on. Um, each piece of the consolidation is pretty straightforward. It's when you try and put all the pieces together with all the different wording that people get lost. The other thing is because each piece looks kind of straightforward, people go, oh, yeah, I don't really have to work on it, which is a big mistake. So really, I can't stress enough. Do the problems and keep up with the course because otherwise you're going to um, get really far behind and not be able to finish. Out of all the classes I've taught, this probably is the highest dropout rate or drop rate um, just because of consolidations. Now, that said, we're starting with not-for-profits and um, not-for-profits and foreign currency, um, which are generally more straightforward chapters. I thought that would work better. And that leaves all the consolidation to the end when I can have a longer exam and so on. So let's just go through this document to prepare for the videos. So before each chapter, read through the textbook and or the class notes. And the check class notes, we talked about, they're posted on Blackboard. Don't go through the examples or fill them in. We're going to do that with the videos. Just get the theory portion so you know what we'll be doing in the lecture videos. So for the lecture videos, print, print the class notes or use a tablet with a stylus. You guys, when you handwrite things, it just sticks better with you. Open the lecture video using the link, as I showed you with the YouTube video. Then with your class notes available, <clears throat> actually go through the lecture videos and fill in the notes. Don't just watch the lecture videos and, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I know what they're doing. <clears throat> Fill in your class notes. And if you want, watch the video, each little portion, hit pause and fill it in so you're kind of memorizing and learning it as you go. So there's different things you can do there. So as I fill in the notes, I'll also link to the theory to reinforce it. As you go through the examples with the video, go back over any parts that didn't make sense. You want to do that right away. Um, and if there's something that you just can't get, you've looked back at the text, you're not understanding, make a note or highlight it. So you can ask me, or you can put a note in the discussion board. Really, I can't stress this enough, you guys. You really have to stay on top of the material in this course. And so you can read this little thing. Um, 
We all watch a lot of YouTube videos. I'm assuming I'm not the only one. Make sure you don't just watch them. Participate actively. You've got to be engaged or you're going to learn out on, lose out on the learning opportunities. Um, the nice thing is YouTube, you can speed me up. If I'm going too slowly for you and you're rolling your eyes, go, oh my God, it's taking too long. Just put it on double time. If I'm going too fast, slow me down and pause all you want. So students who are successful participate during the class of videos. So filling in the items and going, okay, hit pause. Why did we just do this step? Oh, because it said X, Y, and Z. Okay. So after you've actually walked, actively watched the lecture videos um, in all the notes, then go to the suggested problems. Solutions are provided. Actively work through the problems. Don't just look at the solutions and go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what they're doing. Then, after you've done at least two of the suggested problems, you can go on to the connect assignments. The notes I give are straightforward. It gives you the basis, the basic understanding of consolidation so you know it inside out. The suggested problems expand it by giving you differently worded questions. Once you've done that, then you can move on to the connect assignment. Now, questions, office hours, and discussion board. Again, week of September 14th, we'll start office hours. Um, I've already talked about office hours and the times, but what I'm gonna do is I'm only letting one person in at a time. Everybody else has to wait in the waiting room so that you have a private time to ask your questions, just like in office hours, in real office hours. Um, please use your given names and have your microphone and video available if you have one. If you don't, you can just use chat. I will have my video. I will also be able to share my screen with the document camera, so um, I'll be able to write things down and we can work on stuff if we need to. Now, that said, in my office hours in real time, sometimes I have two or three people come together because you're all working on your assignment together. Well, if you come to office hours together and you all want to be in, once I've let the first one of you in, just tell me, can you also let these other two people in? And that's fine too, okay? So if you don't want to come alone, you want to bring someone, that's fine. Um, but I do want to give people the opportunity to ask questions and be very open without other students watching them. Um, you can also ask questions by email. I'm pretty darn good, I have to say. Students have commented over the years that I'm very good at explaining through email. But if your schedule doesn't work for office hours and uh, email seems too hard for you, we can also find a different time to meet. And of course, discussion board. Now, your two midterm exams will be written during scheduled class time. Your final will be written on the date scheduled by the university, so check your course outline. Your exam will be on Connect. There's gonna be problems and multiple choice questions. Multiple choice, it's not like theory, like in OB where you might have multiple choice questions on theory. There might be some, but it's mostly calculated questions, little exercises. And I'll post the summary of exam topics and the breakdown of the topics. And I'll give you a small pretend exam you can try before the first midterm so you know what um, it looks like in Connect. Now, this Connect here, it may be subject to change. I'm not sure we're going to see how well it works. Um, I've got a very large class, so um, I might do all automatically marked questions, or there might be portions which will either be in Connect or it'll be a written thing you have to hand in, but I'll let you know way ahead of time. The exams are gonna be open book. So you can use your notes, the textbooks, any of your coursework during the exam. Midterms are one and a half hours long, the final will be two hours. 
Now, to approximate CPA exams, which are very crunched for time, and to reduce cheating, they're going to be, you're going to have to be working the whole time. There's not going to be a lot of people that are done early. So you don't have time to search through your notes and all your problems and figure out how to do the exam. So you must prepare for the exam as if it were a closed book. So you probably all heard open book exams are harder. Mostly that's because people think they don't have to study as hard, but actually think of it as a closed book exam and study as if it were a closed book, then you should do well. But then you have your materials available just in case you go, oh, I forgot what that fourth step was. You can look it up. Now, during the exams, you'll have to take a picture of your face next to your screen with your student ID. So that's, everybody's going to have different numbers on their exams. So that's for me to check that it's you with your student ID and your exam. I've done this before in the, spring, in the uh, winter session when we had to go to um, online. It worked really well. You don't have to email it to me until the exam's completed. Then you've got 10 minutes or so to email it to me and just have your phone handy for the exam then. And I'll give you all these instructions again before the exam, so don't worry about that. So hopefully with the course outline and this document, how to work through Accounting 410, and then the little survey of Blackboard we did, you have an idea how to be successful with this course. Please, if you have any questions, um, email me. And starting next week, of course, we, we have office hours if you want to come and actually see me online, of course. So I hope that helped. Um, let me know if I missed anything. And um, I find if a number of students are asking the same questions, I will put um, an announcement up or I'll send an email with the answer to that question. So, you know, if like five people have come to me saying, you know, the second question on this assignment doesn't make sense, then I start looking at it and going, okay, wait a second, there's something, maybe something wrong with it. And if there isn't, it might just need clarification. Okay, so that's all I wanna do here for this video. I will see you in the next videos. Take care.